Well, our moms think we're funny. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Turk182 here. And Akomi. And uh, we are with part two of uh, our, what, child, was it childhood fears? or uh, Yeah, yeah. Okay. The base, that's the basic gist. We're basically just talking about fear. All right. So uh, we'll come up with some clever ass nickname later. Yeah, so, you know, part one was, uh, was childhood fears, and part two was going to be, you know, um, adult fears. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, so we talked about, like, the, you know, the, the things that shaped us, and now we're going to talk about, you know, kind of what they shaped us into. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, you know, some of the fears I had as a kid um, are, you know, are still there. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like I don't have a fear of the of the unknown in the dark, right? right. So this this is kind of interesting, right? I'm gonna take a swig here. Okay. Mm. Uh, all right. So I don't have a fear of the dark because as a kid, yeah, you know, what was what I was afraid of were you know, here's all these things that could be there. It right. could be like, you know, this monster from this thing or this thing or that thing. So, but I'm not afraid of walking through my house at night. Right? I'm not, uh, you know, in the dark, you know. Yeah. But I don't do it not because I'm not, I'm afraid. It's because now as an adult, I know the real horrors that are out there. Right. Right. And now it's not because I'm afraid. It's because I need to be cautious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know that someone hasn't broken into my house, you know, right? Um, and that I've made that I haven't like startled them in the middle of them, them, you know, you know, doing something or whatever. Uh, so the last thing I want to do is be caught underwear. So I, I'm not like afraid to walk through my house, but I'm like I've got to be cautious. If I right. can, you know, if there's a certain section of my house that is really dark, mm -hmm. you know. Um, <clears throat> Then I want to make sure that I illuminate that in some way because I don't want something to be there and me not be aware. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to be able to see, you know, to make sure that there's nothing there. But again, it's not because I'm afraid. Like I'm like you know, walking onto like, do 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 do. You know, and it's like. <laughs> uh, let, let me ask you this: When you're going upstairs into a dark room, do you ever run up those last couple steps? Uh no. Really. No. You're like the first person I've ever talked to who doesn't. Everybody I've ever talked to always runs up the last, like, five steps. Yeah. I have had, so at my mom's house in her basement, um, I don't know what it is about that basement, but going up the stairs, um, I, I, I think because, like, at the, because at, her house is so old, the stairway is, like, all her stairways are really narrow yeah. because her house is, like, over 100 years old, right? No stairway. Denied. Oh. <laughs> uh, so they're really narrow. So at the, in the in the basement, it's it's the 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 narrow opening in the walls. But then as you go down, it opens up. So yeah. there's no walls and there's no like handrail. Mm. So when you're going back up, you go from it being a lot more open to it narrowing out. Even though it's not it's not this the stairs the same width, right? Right. But now it's become constrictive. Yeah, yeah. And but as I'm going up there and walking up the steps. I always get this feeling that there's something like coming up behind me. Right. Like you, you know, you can, you know, when something gets close to you, you can feel that there's something close to you. Oh yeah. I always feel like there's something like getting close to me, and that is frightening. Um, not because, again, it's because I don't know. The, the her basement has, you know, there are windows down there, and right. you know that kind right. of stuff. Um, and there's also a door, you know. Uh, down there, you can get access from the outside and stuff. And I don't know that something hasn't gotten in right. from there because you're talking about a, you're talking about a basement, and hers isn't like mine. Would say fully finished. It's got some finished areas, but then it got some area that is just like kind of um, earthen. Yeah, um, yeah. It's not, it's not straight dirt, but you know, it's um, it's it's not like fully walkable area. It's more of like a crawl space. So I, you know, when I go down there, I'm not looking at every little thing and like looking around and stuff. So I don't know if there's not something in there. It could be like a, I don't know, a homeless person that's like, you know, set up camp in there or whatever. <laughs> right. It, her, the house next, not next door to her, it was one over. There, uh, it had been uh, empty for a while. They've been trying to sell it. And there was a guy that was living in there because, uh, and they called the police a couple of times because there would be a light on in the attic, yeah. Shell Silver scene. And like, there's no one in the house. And like, sometimes the light in the attic would be on and sometimes it wouldn't be, you know? <laughs> And they actually had to get the police to go in there and like 
go in there and they were there was evidence that someone had been living in the house and so the police had to keep waiting and trying because they couldn't like just position somebody outside waiting for see if someone was going to come back right what? but they had to kind of keep checking back uh, to catch a person actually in the house huh. So, I mean, that kind of stuff is possible. Oh, totally, totally. So, walking up the stairs and you feel this, what feels like a presence, someone behind you, you don't know there's not anyone behind you. Right, yeah. You know? Uh, and it's really, it, 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 that that kind of be, can be creepy. And that can make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Because you want to be brave and be like, hey, I'm not going to turn around. But, right. the, but the smart thing is, you, you fucking turn around, dude. I yeah, mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because there, there's that element of like, no, I'm going to be a man here. <laughs> Right, and it's like, yeah, that, I'm not a kid anymore, but yeah, you know, a kid would turn around because he's like, oh, it's the wolf man, <laughs> you know, but you're like, hey, dude, it could be a regular person, yeah. which is what's scarier than a wolf man. <laughs> hey, that boy's me, Sticky Larry. Yeah. <laughs> Got any of that beef jerky. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, so like, so my, my fears have like evolved to where I'm no longer like afraid of the, you know, ambiguous monster in the dark yeah now i'm just cautious of the real the 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 human that could be right like right. there you know there's there's not a ton of moments where i'm super worried about humans and maybe it's just because like you know i've i've done a little bit of study of martial arts i'm not like a super weak person so i i'm not like crazy worried about it it's like the two choices here that, you know, they're either going to kill me and it'll be over pretty quickly or I'll be able to hold my own. I, I mean, it's obviously not something that I want to happen, but I'm also not, like, super crazy scared of it either. Right. Um, but it's interesting that you bring up just, like, the whole caution thing and all that because, you know, it's like, no, you know, acting with caution and common sense is not a fear thing. Like, you know, just because I'm, I refuse to walk up behind a bull and kick it right in the groin doesn't mean that I'm afraid. Right. It means that I'm just going to utilize some basic common sense. But, uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, so I, I think it's when you're like, yeah, I'm not, you know, afraid of a human. I'm like, well, I'm sure it's something like, I think there's like, there's be a bobcat, like sitting in my living room. And <laughs> was like, I knew you'd be home sooner or later. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not a threat to you. I don't care. <laughs> I'm an animal baby. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, so yeah, that's um, that's uh, that's a like I said, it's not a fear, but it's a precaution. So yeah, that yeah. that's what my as you know, it's like I've learned more about that, and so now it's like, oh hey, it's something to that you need to be you know, need to be aware of. Yeah, you need to look out for. It. Just take care of yourself. Yeah. Um, and like it's so like now like my my fears, my actual fears, um are no longer like the things from like, you know, being a kid. Now I have like fears of like, you know, oh shit. Like, you know, do I have enough money in my account to, you know, get gas <laughs> next week? Yeah, like well, those, those are like the well, real. Well, this episode ain't a comedy one now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that my, my fears are more practical now. Yep. And these are the things that scare me and keep me up at night. You know, it's like, you know, going to, going into work and be like, you know, uh, it's like, you know, shit, am I, am I still doing a good job? You know, right. um, uh, you know, or, or like, does that did that work out? Or like, I've got like I've got these bills to pay. She's like, am I gonna have enough money to to pay? Like, that's the that, that's the stuff that really scares me, dude. Like, one of my biggest fears nowadays as an adult is like scanning my card and just expecting it to be declined. And even if it's payday, if it's the morning of payday and I can see in my bank account that the money was deposited, I'm still just fucking scared out of my mind every time I get gas or buy something that it's gonna just be declined. Terrifying. You know, I always say, and I say it jokingly, but it's not really a joke. I am never more broke than I am on payday. Oh yeah. It's and that's like the because it's you 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 wait until payday. It's like oh, dude, payday's coming up, right? But it's never because like oh, payday's coming up, man. That new video game's coming out, or like <laughs> you know, payday's like payday's coming out. Like, Shit, I can pay these bills, right? Yep. But then you know, like it's it's so bittersweet because you know that all right, so I just got paid, got pay these bills, and now. Only thing I have to look forward to is the next payday. Yep. Because now I'm because now I'm broke. Yep. It, it's it's oh. almost it's almost like nothing has changed. You're like here's like here's like Wednesday. Right. Here's payday. Here's Friday. There's no difference 
from Wednesday and Friday. Yep. They're the exact same, you know. Yep, and, it's, and, it's still just like watching every penny and like, okay, what, what can I do to survive until next payday? Right. It's like in my account. And the, the scariest thing is when is when you look and like the only thing, that, the, the difference from Wednesday to Friday is that you have less money in your account on Friday than you did on Wednesday, which right. you got paid on Thursday. Like, how does this compute? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, I mean, I can expect it if like, you know, Wednesday, like Friday, I have more money than I had on Wednesday, but then Tuesday, I have more less money than I had on Friday. Right. That makes perfect sense. But when I have less money on Friday than I had on Wednesday and I got paid on Thursday, <laughs> I'm like, uh, oh, God, no. Oh, man, yeah. No, I didn't uh. even... Yeah, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, that's just like a constant fear. Yeah, for I mean, me. and that and that's I mean that's a real that, that's not like a, like a worry or a concern. I'm not talking about a real genuine fear. I mean, that's like some keep me up late at night shit. Oh, man. totally, totally. It's like I went to I went to see my doctor and uh, he was asking me like you know like uh, uh, about uh, the so I went to go I have to see a uh because of my uh my adhd right right i have to see a uh a psychiatrist in order to get my prescription refilled and that's pretty much all i do and i'm not trying to like say anything bad about my say i'm not getting proper care because i don't really i don't have any problems right i don't believe in that kind of shit i mean some people have like serious problems they gotta see a psychiatrist for and more power to them i'm not gonna i'm not um fucking l ron hubbard right and because like psychiatry is bad and yada 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 because like creating your own fake religion with space gods uh and not, not like like a god that's you know like in like another like in heaven or whatever like actual space gods it, space yeah because that, right, that makes sense um but but no um uh, i'm not putting down psychiatry i'm just saying that i don't I, you're just putting down scientology you know, yeah yeah well, I mean, I, I do love Tom Cruise. Don't get me wrong. I do love you Tom gotta Cruise. you got to watch your step. They're going to send people to kill us now. And, and Beck. I do love Tom Cruise and Beck, right? Um, but, yeah, I just, I can't, I can't get behind that. Um, but anyway, um, uh, psychiatry is fine, but I don't, like, I don't feel like it's something I need. Even, even like, for what little problems I have or whatever. Right, it's, right. For me, I, I just, I have to go there because, you know, we get my... My my ADHD like medicine or whatever yeah, it's like yeah. that's what I that's what I have to do and I basically only go in there but like you know I need I need a prescription so we just do this like you know ten minute like how you doing medicine still working for you okay yeah any problems doing all right like last time I went there they got this like this this form I got to fill out and it's like you know in the past like you know thirty days you know have you felt like this or felt like that or whatever and so it's like. Um, like uh, zero is no, right? Right. And right. then like um, one is like um, like one to two days. Like in the past week, have you? So no, uh, like no or nothing is uh, no days is um, zero. Yeah. And then um, one uh, two to one to two days or one to three days is like a one. And then like you know half of the week is a two or like every day as a, is like a three. Right. And then you add them up. Like, so you, you circle whichever one it is that you're feeling and at the bottom, you add it up. Right. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, and I told him, I was like, I don't know. Like this, I was like, I, I hate this form. This form is, I didn't say bullshit, but like this form makes no sense. Like, like where am I adding up the zeros? Am I adding up the number of, of, of like zeros there are, or am I adding it up? Like I would add, because then it'd just be zero, which means right. there's no point having a total at the bottom of that column. <laughs> That's just dumb. And I'm like, and so in the other one, am I again? Am I adding up? So if like it's the ones, right? If I'm adding it up, it's going to be the same. Whether I'm adding up the value or if I'm adding up the number of times I did it, right. it's going to be the same. But when I get to the twos, like what I that what, I'm like what. And he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, that's 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 kind of bad. Like, I realize that probably no one else looks at it this way, but I'm like, I don't know what to do here. Your instructions are vague and bullshit. I hate that. You know, it's it's like there's another one. It's like you know, and it's, it says like you know, I've used rec recreational drugs. You know, like like you know, how often do you use rec recreational drugs? It's like you know, um, like uh, all the time or or you know, often uh, or hardly ever. There's, well, there's no never? Wait, like, there's no never. Oh, like, that. I'm not answering that. I'm like, and I told him, I was like, yeah, I'm not answering this. Because there's no answer I can give that is none. Right. You yeah. don't have that on there. So, like, this is bullshit. I'm not answering that. So, I, I was like, I left these blank because they don't apply to me and I can't answer it in any way that doesn't say that, that I've been some way engaged in any of this activity right here. Right, right. I'm like, your questions are bullshit. 
Um, so, <laughs> and, and that's something that that's a, a that's a pet peeve of mine is when you have to fill out a questionnaire and they give you a question where like like you can't answer it at all right without uh without saying that you have done this thing or right. whatever are you sorry that you beat your wife right like what <laughs> right. like i can't what? <laughs> <laughs> what am i gonna i'm gonna circle with yes and no right. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i just i, I hate that you know, or like i we had to do one for work and it was this thing and so i so this one thing, and it's like, that's incorrect. This is the correct answer. Like, yeah, no, it's not. Right. Because your answer doesn't take into account these things right here, which you clearly said. Right. You know, leads to this. Like, you know, what are the three main factors of this? It's like, nope, it's this one. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> don't don't freaking sit there and tell me that this is the right answer, right? When you said that this is the right answer, and make it seem like I'm wrong. Like, yeah, no, yeah. you're wrong, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> like, she was like, oh, I hate that. But anyway, um, getting back to the thing. Uh, so, um, uh, sorry, I was talking about the, having to go to the, the doctor and that kind of stuff. Um, for the, and I for the kind of completely lost my train of thought. We're just <laughs> off the rails. Just, just, we're out of control. Um, you come bring me back, bring me back, bring me back. Uh, we're talking about fear. Right, we're talking about fear, but there's a reason why I had to go into like my whole thing with having to go see the doctor and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I was getting to, uh, I was talking to him about something when I had to go see him and we were, ta- oh, he was talking about me, um, sorry, going to see my, my regular, like primary care physician. He was like, so like, when was the last time you saw your, your primary care physician? I was like, oh, I just had my physical, like, you know, a couple months back. Um, he was like, so nothing else I was like, no, I mean, if I get like a cold or I feel like I'm going to get a cold, I'm going to go get some over the counter stuff and take that to fight it off. I don't really have any kind of ailments. I don't, it's like, you know, I don't have any reason to see the doctor except for, you know, when I have, um, when I have to have my physical. I was right. like, plus, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to avoid going to the doctor because I can't pay fucking medical bills. Even with insurance, I can't pay medical bills. So I will, hey, dude, if I break an arm, I'm going to splint that shit myself. Right. And, and t- unless like my arm just, just like starts to swell up or like my skin starts to <laughs> rot or something like that happens or like, like I start to lose like sensation in my fingers, something like that, I'm not going to the doctor because I can't afford it. Even with insurance, I can't afford it. So no, what my physical like- is free. <laughs> What's that thing in Always Sunny where Charlie Day is like, oh, look at me, Mr. Big Time Millionaire goes to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, it's just like, I, no, I, I try to avoid that because I just, I can't afford it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I totally get that. So, yeah, so yeah, that's, so that, that's a fear. Like, it's not really a fear, but that's a concern. I'm talking about, you know, like, you know, paying bills. Like, I have got enough to pay my regular bills. I can't toss anything else in there. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, I just like, you know, like, so yeah, like for me getting hurt, like tripping down, you know, falling down steps or whatever, that's kind of a fear too, because I'm like, <laughs> I sure as I ain't going to the doctor. So let's, let's see how long we can do with the shattered spine. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> I'll just uh, see, uh, so yeah, I can, I can tie two broomsticks together to be able to work the gas and the brake <laughs> with, with, with my one hand. I can drive with the other hand and then it's like, shit, there's a lot of stairs at work. I can crawl up those. <laughs> Uh, I'll just get some old shoes and put them on my knees, uh, <laughs> and, and, and that'll take care of that. All right, then. Hello, everybody. It's me, Dorf. <laughs> uh, but, it's it's interesting. Neither of us have really brought up anything like uh, like losing a loved one or anything, but that's not ever anything I've really like feared. You know, it's a concern and it's a worry, but it's not a fear. Yeah, I mean, it's not. It's not like it's something I want to happen. Because that, that would be crippling if you woke up every day with, like, a fear that, like, oh, my goodness, this could happen. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that keeps you in bed all day. Oh, yeah. I've, I've known people like that, so. So, yeah. Um, now, I mean, it, it, it's a worry, and it's definitely a concern, you know. Um, but it's, it's, not a, it's not a full-on, like, fear that, you know, like, <gasps> you know, like, I'm, I'm afraid of that. Yeah, I th- I'm more concerned with being able to pay my bills. That's, that's, right. a, that's a thought that pops in my head, like, every day, you oh, know. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, it, which I've always, you know, we've met a couple of like, you know, celebrities and stuff like that. And I don't think I would ever be able to answer this question because I don't think I would get an answer. And um, which is, I really wonder what it's like for people that have that kind of money to look at. So for me, 
when I'm going to go to like, let's say I'm, I'm like, oh man, I don't really have any food in the house or whatever, or maybe nothing I, that I can that I can cook. So, you know, in Fight Club, there's a whole thing. It's like, you know, it, you know, condiments, but no real food. Yeah, yeah. I in my house, condiments. right, I've got like, I've got a bunch of side dishes, right? right? But I don't have, so I've got like a can of like green beans. <laughs> That's not a meal. Right? So I've got like a bunch of side dishes that I can make, like I, I got you know, like a box I can make some rice with. That's not a meal, you know. <laughs> I don't have anything that I can make that doesn't require me like staying in the kitchen. Like, okay, well, all right, I'm gonna cook this sausage here, and then I'm gonna make this rice, and I mean, like, that's that. I, that's when I'm hungry. I don't have like an hour to make a full piece. It's oh, just, yeah. it's, you know, what, who, who am I feeding, right? Right. So, so if I'm thinking about it, like, okay, do I have enough money to order pizza? Let me go check my bank account. <laughs> What's it like for people that don't have to do that? They'll be like, oh, hey, let's go out to eat. I don't have to you – know, I know I have money in there. Or to be able to look into your bank account and be like, I got like 10 grand in the bank. Right. Oh, now, I, I can't imagine what that's – I mean, I've had that feeling when I get my taxes and the next thing you know, <laughs> like it's it's Friday and my bank account's right back to where it was. Yeah, there you, you go. Know, <laughs> you know, so but what's it like for people that, you know, when you look at, in your account and you see all those zeros – Right. Yeah. You know, well, sorry. When you look in your bank account and there's a comma, yeah, right? Yeah. All those commas. <laughs> right. It's like I, I see lots of fucking zeros in my. Account. Right. You know, and when I look at when I look in my bank account, I see a decimal point. I hardly ever see a comma, and I can tell you right now, I've never seen more than one comma in my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what's it what's it like when you look in there and you see that when you don't have to when you don't have to check your account every other day to see has this thing gone through right you know to see okay this is paid now what else can I pay right you can yeah. just pay them like I wonder what that's like when you look in there and like you don't have to check it on a regular basis when you don't have to wait for your next check to come in to be able to pay a bill right that I, I'm just curious what that feels like yeah yeah. Especially for people who who haven't always had that. Right, yeah. Yeah, like co- coming out of poverty and into that situation would be very interesting. But no, I was just uh, I was just thinking, I saw a, a news article, I think on like Yahoo or something, of like Lady Gaga has been trying to get a job working as a barista at Starbucks just because she wants to experience what that's like. It's like, I cannot imagine being so bored that it's like, huh. Yeah, I think I'm going to get a minimum wage job and just see what that's like for a little bit. Well, okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tackle this from like three fronts, right? Okay. Okay. So first off, people like Lady Gaga, um, Sheryl Crow, Kanye West, right? Right. And I'm picking those three out because Lady Gaga used to write songs for other people, right? And she had to... I'm trying to think of if it was someone that said, hey, you should sing these songs, or if she was like, I think it was like someone said, hey, you should sing these songs yourself, right? And she was like, I don't think so. I think that's how it went, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Cheryl Crow used to be a um, used to be a backup singer. She was actually, I think, a backup singer for Paul Abdul. Wow. Right? Um, and, you know, part of being a backup singer is, like, you're hoping that one day, by being a back- backup singer, doing a good job, making the right connections, you can, you know... That you can, you know, become your own, like, you know, successful solo artist or whatever. Right. Um, I think I told you, like, you know, I was watching that one David Bowie documentary and Luther Vandross uh, was a backup singer on uh, one of David Bowie's albums, right? Mm-hmm. Before he became, you know, a, a solo artist. So, like, no one no one says, like, yeah, I'm, I'm good being a backup singer. I mean, obviously, if you can sing and you can do good harmonization, then you could probably, you know, you know, be a solo artist. You just have to make, have the connections and, you know... And you really even have to write your own songs. We look at some of these people that are successful right now, and you know they have people that write songs for them. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I mean, you could, I mean, either that or you could. I mean, I guess I could write a song. I'll just call it all the single men. We'll just be like all the single men, <laughs> all the single men, all the single men, all the single men, and then just copy and paste that like you know, twenty <laughs> times. Bam! I wrote a song, bitch. I, and I, I'm, 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 I'm making fun of that because there was that that meme that was like you know. Bohemian Rhapsody, written by Freddie Mercury, right? right? It's like this song, written by like 20 people, yeah, but yeah. it doesn't, it only has like the same like five words like repeated over oh, and yeah. over again. The, the song, You a Stupid Ho. <laughs> God, I've never heard that, but or, I don't think who, I want who to. Run the World Girls, that was one that they did uh, yeah. that comparison on, yeah, stuff like that. So, so, you know, it's like you're, you're doing this, so Kanye is like 
creating beats and stuff like that and doing some verse on people's songs, but it's like, when do I get to shine? Right. You, you're not ready. Or, you know, maybe, you know, people are holding you back. And I'm not saying this is the case, but, you know, obviously, if you've got talent, so you can, like, you write songs, right? Right. You've got a good voice. You can sing back up, whatever. And maybe the only thing I can do is sing, but I can't write songs. You're a threat to me. Right, yeah. And I certainly can't let you go because... You know, like you're singing backup for me, so you help me harmonize really well. You're writing songs, right? Mm -hmm. If I lose you, like you're now like the biggest, like you're my biggest, like you know, uh, like uh, 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 opponent. You know, right? Like, you're, yeah. you're you're direct competition for me. Yeah, yeah. And and I can't have that. Um, so obviously, I'm not gonna let you go. Um, which is which is kind of shitty. So like like the 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 better job you do, the the worse it is for you right yeah but if you don't do a good job then you can't show what you're capable of so <laughs> it's like damn you kind of damn if you do if you damn if you don't mm -hmm. and you uh, fired. right so you take it like i said cheryl crow singing back up or whatever being able to write songs play guitar you're a threat to someone that can only like sing right you know and yes i can dance too but the dancing does not do anything for my music career yeah, yeah. that helps me like on stage and in videos or whatever but as far as like the actual job of singing Right, that doesn't do anything for me. Right. You know, so, so for for those people who have, in their own way, have kind of like made their way to where they are. Yeah. Because they started, you know, they work for somebody else, and they weren't probably really getting paid that much either. Right. right? So they right. work for somebody else, and they get to that, you know, that level, and now here I am. So I can respect that. Yeah. You know. Um. But. But that being said, for you to be like, you know, yeah, I'm going to get a job, um, you know, working at Starbucks because, because what? Because what? Right. No, I mean, I, I'm in, and I'm, I'm being kind of a dick here, but at the same time, I'm being honest, because what? Because there are people that work at Starbucks, not because they wanted to, because they need a job, and they're aspiring to do more, right? right. This is not play for them. And for you, that's exactly what it is. You don't need this job in any way. And for you to put your heart and soul into it, I commend that. But you're also kind of you're kind of like shitting on me, right? Yeah. Because you don't need this, and it really is playtime. No matter how serious you take it, because I don't want to be here, right? Yeah, I want to be somewhere else. And for you to be where I am, to come down and be like, I just want to see what it's like. Hey, fuck you, right? Yeah, fuck you. Yeah, if you want to see what it's like, go start a movie somewhere where you play like a fucking Starbucks barista, <laughs> right? You even get the experience. But don't come to my job when you don't have to be here. Yeah, it's like there, there was somebody who actually needed that job who didn't get hired right. because you got hired. And, of course, you're going to get hired because that's going to be kind of big publicity for them, right? Right. That they're going to be able to think, use or whatever. Um, and, and, like, and, I'm not, and I'm not trying to say these people are assholes, but... You think about what it is that you're that you're saying and what you're trying to do in the end really what you what you're saying and doing to the other people because the money that you're making at Starbucks is shit mm -hmm. you don't need that at all yeah and the thing is yeah. you can't at that point you can't give your money away that's a dick move well any money I make at Starbucks I'm gonna like donate to charity and fuck you right because you're making millions of dollars if you want to give money away to charity just fucking do it yeah right right so I need this money to survive. This is my living. This is how I pay bills when I can. Right. right? Like I've got a nice, I, I've got a good job. I like my job, right? I mean, obviously, I want to, if I could do something else full time, you know, that I love more, like if we podcasted full time, if we, you know, whatever full time. Yeah. Yeah, great. But I like my job and I have a full time, you know, 40 ish hours a week, you know. Um, and I'm secure in that, that I know that my hours are the same. As opposed to someone that works Starbucks, who's probably going to be working part-time unless they're the manager or assistant manager, right. right? whose hours are not consistent. Maybe this week I get 15 hours. Maybe next week I get 20, you know? Yep. It's, it's rough. Right. So I can't even count on my paycheck being the same from week to week. So that money is very important to me. For you, it's nothing. Yep. And I can kind of understand, but at the same time, I do, I do have to say, fuck you. Mm -hmm. just really fuck you yeah yeah um don't do that you're not earning any respect with me you know um because i can tell you right now for those actors that 
that you know waited tables until they got their big break or whatever. None of them twenty years later be like, you know what? <laughs> and I, I think I'm gonna just go back to just get a part time job waiting tables. So I just kind of re- just get that feeling back. It was no, no, <laughs> you did that shit because you had to, and yep. once you got out of it, you didn't look back. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, I just I can't imagine. I, I really can't imagine. And I'm not saying she's a horrible person. I'm just saying your your idea was not well thought out. Yeah. So just take a step back and ask somebody what they think of it. And I'm pretty sure they're going to say, that's a really bad idea. Please don't do that. Yeah. I, I'm not going to say it's a bad thing. I will say that it was a very ignorant thing. Talk to somebody. Right. Ask them yeah. what it's like. Yeah. Like, that, that to me is a better... Is, is is a better way of experiencing that than be like I'm gonna sit in your shoes for a while now. Right. Yeah. And I can guarantee that if she had asked any Starbucks barista, they would have said, "Don't, don't do this." Hmm. Or anybody. I mean, and like you know, you know freaking used car salesman or whatever. Like, yeah, no, don't. Because <laughs> that that's the thing. I've always said this. Is one of my dreams. Right. Is um you know, people always say you know. Like, what would you do if you won the lottery, right? And, and the, most people say, I would quit my job. Yeah. If I won the lottery, I'd quit my job. And I say, if I won the lottery, I wouldn't quit my job. Because first off, um, you know, even when we're talking about, you know, like paying bills or whatever and, and help that, it, it still provides me the insurance. Right. If I win the lottery, if something does happen to me, I'm paying that all, you know. So when I get an x-ray done, that's like, five thousand dollars as opposed to with insurance i get an x-ray done it's like two hundred dollars yeah, yeah you know so that's one big difference um but i may i may switch to part-time that way i can do because now i've got money to do a lot of stuff i want to so i may switch over to part-time but i would keep my job one for the insurance and two with your job right when when your job gets to just be untenable right mm-hmm when when it, when it gets to that point, um, what's the worst thing? What's the thing about it that you hate the most? Uh, the people. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying so. The people are pissing you off, right? Right. But what is it about that that really just just kills you? Uh, I mean, there's it. It depends on what angle you're you're wanting me to answer this from. There's a lot of levels to it. Well, okay. So I'll say you. For me, it's that I can't leave. Oh yeah. It's like when, when things get their absolute worst, the people around me are just this assholes, like the workload is just too much or this or that, and just I'm getting so stressed out. The thing that makes it the worst is that I can't leave. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. stuck yeah. here. You know, sure, I can try. And that's the other thing, thing is like trying to find another job, right? Well, first off, you got to find time. Right. You know, like you've got to find time to, to like go online and look. you got to find time to do interviews and stuff like that, you know. Because, I, mean, I mean, that's one thing when, you, when you're trying to leave a job, right? Oh, yeah. You know, trying to find time to get time off to schedule an interview with somebody oh, else. You're, you're trying to work with two different people's schedule without letting one know about the other, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like, it's like t- dating two girls at the same time and trying to keep it a secret. <laughs> you know, so... Be like, like hey, where are you going to be this weekend? Okay, good. Yeah, we're going on the opposite side of town. You know? <laughs> oh, jeez. So, so, um, so that that's that's the thing. But if I was a millionaire or I won the lotto, mm-hmm. that's no longer a concern. Yep. And my job becomes so much easier. It becomes so much like less stressful. Yeah. Because I don't have to stay. I choose to stay. And because of that. Everything just washes off of me. Right, yeah. I still want to do my job. I'm going to do the best job I can, but I don't go home with that same worry. Right. You know, if, if I mean, I've had to deal with people, it's like, you know, I can you know, I can take you or leave you because I can walk out the door tomorrow and I'm okay. So your asshole's behavior does not affect me in the slightest. <laughs> yeah. No, because, because I can, and, and the thing is, all of a sudden my job becomes the best job in the world because whenever I want to, I can just be like, you know, Asa lasagna. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's a really fair observation. I didn't really think of it like that, but yeah. So, okay. um, we should uh, take a breather for an ad break. Yeah. So, uh, see, so we were talking about, you know, what would you know things that make your job better. Well, now let's listen to some people that probably have some really good jobs, or maybe a job you might be interested in. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, roll those sponsors.
Oh, that was nice. Yeah, I like that. That was good. I'm not sure if I would uh, if I would buy that. Um, uh, not not because I don't think it's a good product. I'm just not <laughs> sure if it would fit me. I've already bought two. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. What are you gonna do with those feminine napkins? Oh, you know this and that. Yeah. And they're super absorbent. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, just lots of various applications. I keep a uh, a small box in the kitchen underneath the sink for like <laughs> spills. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It really works when, like, when you spill something like, like blue, like a blue liquid, because you can just watch it just absorb. Right? I, just, <laughs> I never understood why those commercials, like, they show. It's like we're gonna pour this blue liquid, and it's gonna show. Like, really? I mean, I'm just saying, if 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 you got blue liquid coming out of your body, you got bigger concern. They do just go straight to the hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was a bad lead in. <laughs> God, you suck so much. Oh. You know? uh, but um, so yeah, we're, so uh, so we we kind of gotten a little bit off track of fears and everything. But I think I think bit. I think the thing is like our our as an adult, um, our biggest fear is it, it's really just being able to pay bills. Yeah, that, yeah, I mean it's the financial thing because you know like that that's that's real to me. You know, like uh, it, I realize it's a really unlikely thing that I'm gonna like open my front door one night and see a naked hobo with a machete coming at me. It's like, yeah, it could happen. It's a possibility, and I can understand why people would be afraid of it. But the likelihood of that happening isn't really, like, isn't really out there. But, oh, I've been overdrafted on my account before. <laughs> oh. I've had bills that have not been paid before. It sucks. And that's a very, very real thing to me. So, yeah, like, I... I don't, I don't know if I'd say it's, like, the scariest thing to me, but it's definitely the most real and the most constant fear. Well, I, I told you um, that whenever my, my cell phone bill hits my um, my credit card, mm -hmm. the bill, the it, it hits. And when I go and look at my account, it'll say, you know, however much it is, um, and it'll show it being cleared. But it'll also show the exact same amount yeah. pending. <laughs> so basically, it's... It's showing out there's two charges, one that's cleared and one that's pending. But then a lot of times it'll show, oh, you know, you're over your limit. Right. Because it's showing us a double. And I can't, and during that time, I, I mean, I know that it's not really there. But right now it's showing them over my limit. So I can't use my card or I'm afraid to use my card during that time. Yeah. Because it's right now showing this, this fictional over the limit. Mm -hmm. because it's got the exact same charge pending that it's already cleared. And that normally takes two or three days before it to drop off. And I don't understand why it does that. Right. Um, but that that's but that, that stops like, okay, so I can't use this card to do anything with right now. Right. And I'm like, well, that's... that. And uh, yeah, and I know you're like, well, damn, dude, what do you got? Do you got, you know, your credit card is like over the limit. Well, it's, you know, it's... Well, not over them, but it's that that close to the limit. Well, I mean, just like shit, man. There's so many things I pay with my credit card because I don't want to use my debit card for. Right. You know? Yeah. 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 It's like, and if like back nowadays, if we were gonna, if I'm gonna pay like a bill, like my electric bill or whatever, um, it's like I, uh, I have to sign up for their paperless billing. Right. And I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm down for saving a plan and all, but paperless billing. Is so easy to forget. Oh yeah. That's why I don't do it. Yeah. When I when I've got that envelope constantly staring me in the face, right? And it's like I've got two stacks. Here's a paid stack. Here's an unpaid stack, mm -hmm. right? I see I see the two of those all the time. If it's paperless, I don't have those two stacks. Right. Yeah. You know, you would you would be surprised. Well, you wouldn't be surprised how many emails I have that I have like not looked at. Oh yeah. Or like I'm like oh I'm, I'm gonna read that later, right? Yeah. And and then I you know. And then, I, then I'm going through, I'm like, why do I still have like like five or you know eight unread messages? And I've got to go back through weeks. I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't read the email. It's like, oh, I, well, okay, it's still showing as unread, so I'll get back to it later. Right. You know, yeah. now, you know, and bills aren't, aren't going to be like that where I'm not going to read them right away. But it's not a matter of reading it. It's like when I read the bill, can I pay it that day? Right, yeah. And if I can't, then I've read it now. Now, I know you can click on the thing, go back to being like, you know, Mark, this is not red. Right. Right. Or but flag it or whatever. Right. But it's like it's like still it's you know most of the time you look at it and you're like oh shit they have the bill okay yeah I got to pay that you know well I get paid you know uh, on on Thursday so I'll take care of it then and then and, and yeah you know I what if you forget mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Hey, there, there have been times where I've written like checks for stuff. You know, it's because sometimes you gotta like, oh, hey, you gonna you wanna buy some of my Tupperware shit and everything? You write a check, <laughs> but but they wait till they get, like, collect all the orders before they send the check in. This gotta go to like the parent company, and you forget like three weeks later that you wrote that check. Yeah. And then you go to buy some. You look in your account like, what the fuck happened to my money? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, where's hundred hundred feet? Who took hundred feet? Oh <laughs> shit, that's right. Oh hell. And then, then you're there like, oh hell. Because <laughs> I've already bought that other thing. You know, it's yep. like, oh geez whiz. You know, that, that kind of stuff happens. And I mean, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's scary. So, and I, and I don't do the whole, it's like, you know, you can set up for auto bill pay. No. Cause, you know, because of like, I get paid like the 15th and the, and the, and the end of the month. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And because of that, like, you know, obviously the 15th is always going to be, you know, 15 days. Right. But at the end of the month, I don't really know what my check is going to be because it's going to depend on how many days are being paid. Is yep. it is it 15 days or 16 days? Is it 13 days? Thank yep. you, yep. February. <laughs> Fucking Black History Month. <laughs> you know what? That's not fair. Why am I getting shafted on Black History Month? If anything, everyone should get shafted. I should still be paid for 15 days in February. All so, the white motherfuckers should be paid for only 13. <laughs> That's some bullshit. It's to, my day. Yep, not only that, but uh, the reason February is a shorter month is because of the Romans. Because uh, February had more days, and one of the Caesars took days from February to put it into August, I think. Yeah, I was reading something about that because I was like, because the, the whole day calendar cycle thing, I was like, wait, what? How do we get that? And it was like, because it was like a different calendar. And then it went back and was like, oh, I want all the days to kind of like be like this or to match something stupid that it was in his mind that didn't make sense to anybody else. Right. And it was like, yeah, so we're going to rearrange these things and we're going to take days away from this and add to that, you know. But anyway. So, uh, so yeah, so I can't, I, you know, I'm not doing the bill pay because I don't always know what my check is going to be. Oh, yeah. And I, like I say, I know what one of them should be, but then, you know, you never, you never know, like, oh, um, I did this thing at, well, I, it's not really a thing I did at work or whatever, that's just the shit affected, but, you know, the, you, you have certain bills that come at certain times, so I got to be able to make sure I got the money in there. And then who knows, like, you know, maybe I got to pay for that, that x ray, yeah. you know, that, so now I can't auto bill pay. So yes, yeah, so that, that's I mean, that's, that's that's weird how like growing up, I'm afraid of monsters. I I almost wish I could get rid of the fear of bills and bring back the fear of monsters in the dark. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that out there to all the adults out there listening to this, right? And uh, God, I hope there's no kids listening to this. I'm <laughs> gonna say this: if you're a kid, right? If you are like under the age of 16 and you've listened to both parts of this podcast and you're still listening dude dude you're you got problems you're a champ i'm just saying i mean i i can't imagine why you would find that funny if you just like listen to see it whenever we're gonna like you know say the word fuck i, mean, you know, <laughs> I don't know that's, what your reason is that's the moment that i always laugh is when Lovis says fuck i don't i don't know what your reason is it's some, but it's but like hey who's just like a real sadist he's like how is these stupid adults stressing out over bills yes <laughs> it happened to me and it'll happen to you <laughs> but um but i mean i'm curious like how many other people listening to this would be like oh yeah i would definitely bring back my fear of bees right oh, yeah. in exchange for not being afraid of you know not having money to pay bills oh yeah well, i mean you know like just because i still get the heebie-jeebies with both bees and dolls it's like yes i would i would completely embrace that if it meant not having to worry about bills anymore. Now I, I know that I know that you still have the thing with dolls. Um, mm -hmm. and we've talked about that. Oh yeah. So okay, so I have Possibly. one. I've talked about it a lot. I have one for you. Teen, Di Teen Titans Go episode where Beast Boy changes currency to bees, <laughs> and they make Robin do the dance like, uh, dance for your bees, dance, dance yeah. for your bees. <laughs> All I want to do is dance for my bees. <laughs> so so now. You still have the same problems with like paying bills, right? Make sure you have enough money. Oh, but now you've got to pay in bees. The currencies in bees? God, I guess I'd probably <laughs> just kill myself. You'd be homeless. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's not funny. You made homeless is not funny. I'm uh, sorry. I, I, I would be the naked hobo <laughs> with the machete. <laughs> he, when someone opened the door, he's like, should have been afraid of me. <laughs> but, but then what would be your motivation? To be a na naked hobo with a machete? To establish dominance. Really? Because... Because I mean, it wouldn't be to, it wouldn't be to steal from me to get money. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just to establish dominance. 
You know what I mean? So sometimes, if you know people don't know their place, you just got to take all your clothes off and wrestle them a little bit. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. You know what? I, I'm actually going to officially, I'm announcing it here and now on the podcast. I am going to get rid of the Turkway to shit list, <laughs> right? And when I get to that point, they're like, okay, like it, it's all gone downhill. I'm just going to go naked door to door and just wrestle people established dominance. <laughs> really? That's it. Come in the door. It's like, I'm going to prove I'm more man than you. <laughs> you know, you just like, you pin them down and you like, you look over and you're like, remember this moment, bitch. And then you walk off to the next house. And... <laughs> oh, but speaking of wrestling people naked, <laughs> that's, a, that's a bad segue. But... Wow. No, I've, I've got a hypothetical for you. This one was one be... of our sponsors for, for <laughs> in Rob. <laughs> Now we're going to switch over to an interop sponsor. <laughs> no, I've got a hypothetical for you. I might save it for another episode. But, uh, yeah, because we're, we're running a little bit late. Okay, so ne- next podcast I'm going to do... Uh, uh, remind me to ask you this hypothetical, because... I, I thought I thought the last hypothetical question I asked you was uh, was kind of enlightening as far as like your philosophy and your view of the world. So I'd, I'd kind of like to ask. Which you, one was that? That was the one where I asked you what you would do if like there was this like crazy looking hobo following you home one night, and uh, he finally just like catches up to you on oh, yeah. a dead street light and starts grabbing your shoulders and shaking you and screaming, and so you panic and stab him. And as soon as you stab him, he just like jizzes in his pants and says thank you. And your response was. Uh, I don't remember that. <laughs> Your response was, well, if he's dead, we're just going to walk home. You weren't impacted by that at all. See, when I asked uh, when I asked uh, Camelot and Overtim about it, they th- that ruined the whole night. <laughs> they were like, oh, dude, that's awful. No, what? Why? Why would he jizz when we stabbed him? Oh, that's awful. Hey, he died happy. We were having fun. Why would you ask that? <laughs> I never got a straight answer from either of them. No. I'm just, I mean, hell. I mean, that, whatever, dude. I mean, if he were that grateful, I guess I would ask him for some money before he died. No, I wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> who knows who's going to be on that, on that money when oh, you get geez. well that's a thought yeah <laughs> yeah I guess my question would be how do I know that that's what he did well just like a dark stain forms on his pants would I really be looking well I, I think if he was like one of those like noisy orgasmers or is he like one of those like, yeah uh, uh. yeah you know one of those like maybe he's you know just wearing uh, light enough pants that you can really see the dark stain from the wetness. He's like, it's the big one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming, Elizabeth. <laughs> Ribbed for her pleasure. I think Ew. If, if, if I ever have sex again, that's what I'm going to scream. Oh, like God. right, rise and orgasm is like, I'm coming to join you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like we might have done it on Corova. Did we ever? Did we ever have the whole conversation about the worst things you can say during sex? I feel like we did. I kind of feel like we did. I feel like that might have been during EDF. Oh yeah, probably. Yeah. Because <sighs> like uh, the, I think the one I brought up was Happy Birthday Grandma. <laughs> and, and yours was like Scoot Over Dad or something like that. <laughs> we had some bad ones. <laughs> I think one of us said you're the best sister ever. No, that, that's bad. That's bad. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Oops, it fell off. That's a bad one. It's like... No, I think I am gay. <laughs> How to lose a woman in 10 days. It's like... By the way, the test came back positive. Oh no, <laughs> no, that's she's a pregnant. Dick move. I mean, I mean, she's pregnant. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> By the way, I filled my math exam. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> go, son, go, go, son, go. <laughs> Who, Lordy? So yeah, so 
So yeah, I guess we've covered like a pretty full spectrum of like different types of fears. One thing I find interesting is neither of us have really talked much about like the supernatural stuff. Was there like I know you don't believe in ghosts or the supernatural at all right now. Um, was there ever any point when you did? Um, let's see. I know the supernatural isn't something that's supposed to happen, but it does happen. <laughs> Sorry, I, I do like Rob Zombie or White Zombie. I'm not quite sure when I listen to like his songs. I'm like, is this a Rob Zombie song or a White Zombie song? <laughs> But the good songs, you know, right. his later stuff after like yeah, Educated Horses, I didn't really dig that much. But um, um, I think growing up, I where I thought that it might be, yeah, I guess maybe growing up, uh, being like you know, a, a kid, I was like, oh, this this could be real. There could be you know, like you know, like witches and stuff like that, and. And blah blah blah. Uh, I guess I was maybe a little bit more, but I think I was always, it was always, I was skeptical, yeah. right? Like I was like, no, that that those things don't exist. But at the same time, I was like, you know, as a kid, I'm like, but what if it does? Right. Because you know? that's that thing in your mind as a kid is always, what if it does? You know, you know, there's never been any reported cases of vampires. That's because like you know, vampires killed everyone that saw them. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why you don't hear about you know hear about it. Um, so. I think yeah, the supernatural like yeah, you know, believing in ghosts and stuff because you know, you hear ghost stories mm -hmm. and and the ghost stories normally always end with you know the person dying or you know or like you know it's like I saw a ghost once and blah blah blah, it um, just like this yeah. <laughs> well, so one of the one of the other topics we're gonna do, um, which is almost like a really good segue into like a you know, part three or whatever, is like 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 strange or like bizarre things that yeah. you know that have happened to us. Um, so I think at a time when I was younger, I did kind of believe because it's it's just like everything else. I you know I was like I, I had a fear of monsters, so I, I know in my heart as a kid that. There wasn't a well, and there was afraid of Frankenstein, but I know that there weren't like vampires or wolfmen or you know like zombies that kind of stuff. But um, but a ghost, a ghost is much more tangible, even though they're more ethereal. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, because you have more like ghost stories and ghost sightings than you do of like you know Bat Boy. Right, right. right. So. <laughs> I like Bat Boy. So I so I think that, that there was a there was a greater fear of that, um, even though I didn't really like at times like I never seen one, but then that's the whole thing with the ghosts, right? Like, you don't <laughs> see them. Yeah, you might have seen me, but I'm a ghost. And and that new with the with the ghosts is like everything's going smooth until like bam, then you do see them. You know, it's like, <laughs> right. <laughs> like I had no I had no no thoughts of like running into a vampire in the day, right? <laughs> But you know, with a ghost, like it could be anywhere. You could be driving around the, you know, and this thing with the, with the ghost, ghosts aren't centralized to one spot. And it's like you have ghost stories everywhere. You know, people are, like driving their cars, you go across a certain like you know, like road or whatever, and all of a sudden the 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 this car stops and it, it dies, and the lights go out, and then like things shake and stuff appears, and then like and then all of a sudden your car starts back up. You know, it's like so you would never you're never safe from a ghost because they're everywhere. Yeah, they're, yeah. You know, there's a ghost at work. There's a ghost in the car. There's a ghost in the house. There's a ghost in the shell. They're, they're everywhere, <laughs> right? You know, it's like, it's like, it's like Savoir Faire. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> ghosts are everywhere. So, um, so I think, I think that there was, there was a, a bigger, like, fear of ghosts because yeah. of that. Interesting. Um, as a kid. But again, I never encountered one, but then I never encountered any of those other things either. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, now, as a kid, though, I, I might have encountered a couple of serial killers. I just don't know. Oh, yeah. God. That, that's the thing. Like, have you ever just, like, thought about how many houses you've driven by that have people chained up in their basements? Um, I haven't, no. You probably I, will now. Because <laughs> I'm, always, I'm always afraid that something or someone's going to read my thoughts and be like, that's where you put them. <laughs> 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 I drive by the house and look at them like, oh, good times, good times. No, I, um, no, I, I, I have not. But you know, um, one of one of Web Crawler's like biggest like fears, uh, and one of the things that scares him is that scene from uh, Unbreakable, where the guy's like, "I like your house. That's a nice house," and then you know, basically breaks into the people's house and stuff like that. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, that's scary because they, that's that's so realistic. Some guy could just be like, "Oh, hey, I think today I'm just gonna pick your house." Yeah. And so, but um, but no, I've never really thought about about that. 
Okay, well, I, th- I think you're right. I think this is a good segue to go into, like, a conversation about our, uh, like, our, our most unsettling things that have ever happened to us, but I think that would make for a good separate episode. Yep. So, uh, we are gonna call it an episode here. This one was a little bit of a downer. We weren't quite as funny on this one, I don't think, but, uh... Well, I, I think, you know, I think the difference between the first episode and this one is, the first episode, we're talking about childhood fears, right? Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, we're talking about those, and, like, and they're funny because, oh, you know, as a kid, I thought that this was really scary. <laughs> but then sure as an adult, dumb. it's like, now I know what real fear is, you right. know? <laughs> and it's like, and there's nothing funny about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> you can buy another couch, you rich motherfucker. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah, we'll we'll catch you guys later. No, no, no I'm not. I've never, I've never been afraid of not not having money to pay my. Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid of not having money to pay my bills. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Ooh, yeah. So yeah, so that was uh, that was our you know our our second episode of on fears and basically how the the metamorphosis of fear. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a that's probably gonna be the title. That's really good. <laughs> Yeah, our, uh, our uh, Franz Kafka and fear. <laughs> that, that was a good novella. I liked Metamorphosis a lot. But yeah, so uh, yeah, swing by next time, folks. Give a listen to uh, us talk about some of the creepiest, weirdest things that have ever happened to us. Yeah, I got some good ones, too. Cool, I'm looking forward to it. And hopefully you are, too. Later. Zang, yo. Hi, right there, folks. That was Our Moms Think We're Funny. Let's, uh, let's give them a hand.